Blackie explains how the group's bizarre stage act came together. We were looking for <laughs> a way to make a living. I mean, some people will do anything to keep from working, you know what I mean? Um, we started out, oddly enough, as a recording band. And all people don't know that. We never really had any intention of ever playing live. And we went in and we did some demos. And the demos turned out to be pretty good, so we thought, well, you know, we're sitting in a recording studio all this time, we're in front of a 24-track machine, and the machine doesn't applaud for you when you do anything good, so we thought, well, we got to go out and get some instant gratification. We so were screaming at it. Really, you know, nothing was happening except the needles were going like that. So we thought, well, we'll go out and play live, and the first thing we needed was a name. So we chose a name that was controversial without really being controversial. So that's to say, if you know what the name means, fine, and if you don't, that's fine, too. It's a bug, right? right. You know, <laughs> so, <laughs> so right, you know, a little flying around, stinging you on the rear. So, after we had a name, we thought, well, we were going to release an independent single, or we were entertaining the idea of releasing an independent single. So we thought, well, we got to do something to make people aware that we got a product on the shelf to be bought. And we never did the single, but we started doing these bizarre things on the stage to get attention, because the first time we played a gig live, we drew like 33 people and made $67, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So we, we went back to the drawing board for about two weeks, and we started doing these things. We started telling people that we were going to do these things. The next time we played somewhere, the place was packed, and we made like about $500. The next time we go, God, we're on the road to riches <laughs> here now, boy. I'll take roll. Right, really. Yes. Go, wow, here we go. <laughs> I built this boy from a kit, and I've been trying to disassemble him, but the sucker keeps regenerating on me, and I just can't. I kill him <laughs> off, and it makes two the after thing. that, right? It really <laughs> keeps coming back. You know, my own little pet monster here. Well, like I said, you get a bunch of gangsters and hooligans and you put them together and you got wasps, but it's a bunch of people that nobody wanted. And you give people like, like that, right, you give people like that a common cause or goal to believe in. You've got nitroglycerin wrapped up in a package that says rock and roll on it. So, like I said, we were doing things that we felt came natural. So, um, you can hardly blame some of the things that we were doing. We were just four people going out and having a good time, you know? Some people do anything for attention, I guess. The recent national tour as the opening act for such groups as Crocus, Quiet Riot, and Kiss, Wasp managed to outrage everyone with their blood-spurting concert theatrics. Here's bassist vocalist Blackie Lawless explaining what motivates their live presentation. We got to the point where the women's organizations were giving us a lot of heat. So they said, well, why don't you put a man on the rack? And I says, well, if we put a guy on the rack, then we'd probably get the gay organizations coming after us. So I says, I know what we'll do. I told Chris, I says, let's get our pants and we'll cut the backside out of them, you know? So two things happened at that point. We used to have about an 80% male audience. We cut the backside out of our trousers. Not only did the women's organization get off our back, because we're now doing something to ourselves, our audience doubled overnight. It's all women out there <laughs> now. So they were happy, we were happy, everybody's happy.